I spit you a pot. When you with your crew, you thugging you hard. When you all in trouble, you scared of the dark. I feel like no, I pull up in the heart. I try to make it sound like none of the art. Your girlfriend so thirsty, she told me she part. Diamonds and jelly, they look like they burn. I'm talking a lot. So what we got here, what the fuck? Oh my god, so I'm just gonna, you know, anytime I think about Israel Palestine, I'm gonna pull this video up. We're gonna talk about the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood, we're gonna talk about Silwan's Batan, Al Halal neighborhood, the Al Bustan in Silwan, and then the Walaja. La Laja neighborhood in East Jerusalem. And then there's some area called Area C. And that fucking cryptic Area C, huh? So Palestinian ev evictions are happening in these four neighborhoods, I think, in Jerusalem. So then we got to worry about Gaza on top of that. So I'm going to read a paragraph after this, but first a little commentary on what the fuck is going on. The headlines say Netanyahu is out. Netanyahu barely got out, 60 to 59, the Israel politics, apparently fucking legislatures could just go ahead and throw their presidents out, and then uh, put in a different guy, even though they did some backdoor power sharing agreement, two years, two years of this Neftali guy, and then there's two years of some other fucking guy in two years from now. The reason why Neftali is, you know, um, terrible. The reason why Netanyahu getting kicked out is awful is because Natalia is a far right wing fucking psychopath. He is more to the right of Netanyahu, and Netanyahu is sitting there fucking calling him out, saying he's fake right and this and that. He's a far right wing. He's only had far right wing positions. Always saying Netanyahu didn't go far enough, and now Netanyahu is going to be leading the opposition, saying that Natalia isn't going far enough. So Syria and Iran and Palestine, they're going to get attacked even more. We're going to see more Syrian attacks and Iranian and Palestinian deaths. This isn't just expanded settlements that Palestine has to worry about. Now Palestine has to worry about existence itself. The hypocrites, they always say that the Arabs say that Israel doesn't have a right to exist. This Naftali Bennett says that, you know, Palestine doesn't have a right to exist. He says one state, Israel. Israel is all that there is. There is no Palestine. So he isn't just saying, okay, Israel, build houses on Palestinian land and then demolish Palestinian houses. He's saying, this is all Israel's land. Palestine don't have a right to exist. Their people, their nation, none of that's even real. It's all Israel. So the Israeli-Palestinian situation just got shittier. I want Netanyahu to come back. This Natalia is fucking bad news. He's to the right of Netanyahu. And just because he's got some coalition with, you know, a couple Arabs or some shit, I'm supposed to believe that his far right wing bullshit, his far right wing bullshit, he's part of the fucking armed forces. He's been, you know, killing uh, Palestinians and fucking Lebanese left and right, you know, pretty much his entire goddamn life. Israel's going to get more nukes. Israel's going to attack Syria and Iran and Palestine in, in, even more. You're going to see more expanded settlements. You're going to see more conflict. So this just, you know, on Israel-Palestine, those relations just got shittier. I want Netanyahu to come back. I don't want Netanyahu to leave. Not for this motherfucker. No, you want it to, somebody to the left of Netanyahu, not to the right. Naftali's to the right of Netanyahu. So that means Israel's going to get worse. Now, on the settlement question, the Palestinian, uh, Palestinian evictions in Jerusalem, there's court cases with the Sheikh Jarrah. There's a Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood, 28 families, Silwans, Baton Al Hawa. That's 700 Palestinians. The Al Bustan in Silwan is 1,000 Palestinians. And then the Walaja neighborhood in East Jerusalem is, you know, a um, handful of Palestinians, too. You also got Area C. And then there's, you know, West Bank, Gaza. That's all Jerusalem. So there's four existing land issues in Jerusalem that could lead to the evictions of thousands of Palestinians from their homes in three East Jerusalem neighborhoods. The one that captured media attention was last year, or last month, was the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood. Oh, uh, let's see, 700 for Silwan's Batan Al Hawa, Al Bustin in Silwan. 13 families could be in danger of losing their homes, irrespective of that ruling, because they fall under the dictates of the Kaminitz law, which blocks them from seeking any additional legal recourse. 
One such Palestinian family was already given notice last week that he's got 21 days to destroy half of his house. You got 21 days to, de to destroy half your house. Nope, you got to destroy half of your house. 21 days. 21 days, nope, destroy it. And then otherwise the municipality would knock down that portion of us. But you destroy it or we will. So it's a demolition that could spark violence pending evictions at neighborhood international scrutiny. The Wallaja neighborhood. You got the Wallaja neighborhood. The right has viewed each of the cases as land issues. The ones in Al Boostin and Wallaja involved municipal plans for parks. The case. Uh, cases in Sheikh Jarrah and Baton al Hawa involve property disputes between Palestinians and Jews, but they're seen within the larger context of the Israeli Palestinian conflict and placed within the prism of the battle for sovereignty in Jerusalem, with the left and the Palestinians believing that eviction or in, an attempt by the city to seize control of Palestinian neighborhoods for Jewish projects and residents. The neighborhood battles have sparked tension and violence in the European Union and the U.S. weighing in. On behalf of the Palestinians, Hamas has also threatened violence as a result. And the issue of Sheikh Jarrah in particular was one of the sparks that led to May's violence. Gaza, the IDF, Hamas, 11-day war ended on May 21st, but it's unclear if the calm is a law in the war or the end of this round of violence. Hamas has already renewed its threat of more rocket fire with regard to the flag march, and there exists a real chance it could make good on its threat. Bennett and Lapid's coalition could be in the position in its first week of deciding whether and how to retaliate should that happen. It would mark the first time Israel would have a coalition with divergent views on how to handle Hamas rockets. Don't hold your breath. Don't hold your breath. I think this Naftali is worse. This Naftali is motherfucker worse. He's clearly, you know, pretty good power broker or what have you. He was able to get some motherfuckers convinced he's, you know, um, fuck somehow to do what he wanted, but we're going to see what happens. But I don't, I don't feel good about Naftali. Everything that he said, he's been doubling down about how fucking right wing he is. He comes out of, he was the chief of staff of Netanyahu's court, so he comes from Netanyahu's, you know, uh, actual fucking upbringing and grooming and shit. So he probably has nothing but whatever. So Netanyahu, Naftali, uh, you know, between the two, I would have voted for Netanyahu. I mean, Naftali, this motherfucker right wing fucking psycho. No, before I could vote for Naftali, he would have to say, look, two-state solution. But they don't even respect America's position. America says, hey, Israel, two-state solution. Israel says, go fuck yourself, America. And America goes, okay, here's $4 billion. No, nah, that's fine, Israel. You could talk all the shit you want. Here's the $4 billion. Here, we'll just keep paying for all the fucking...